thanks for joining us. I'm Maria Soreo. In an effort to keep our community safe, local volunteers came together to stage emergency drills at the RPV City Hall. These drills were performed by members of the Palos Verdes Peninsula Community Emergency Response Team, known as CERT, along with other CERT teams from the South Bay to prepare residents in case of an actual disaster. Liz Brown Swanson has the details from City Hall. Liz. Hi, Maria. I'm here at City Hall where there are around 100 volunteers with CERT here on the peninsula and from the South Bay. CERT stands for Community Emergency Response Team. And what they're doing is rehearsing all kinds of drills, all to keep our community safe. Very important to have CERT teams because the fire department has made it very clear that in the event of a major disaster like a huge earthquake, there simply will not be enough first responder resources to cover all the needs of our city or any other city. In fact, many uh, residents might not see a fire truck from their fire department for maybe 72 hours after a disaster. There will be just, just so many needs. So CERT responders are being taught to take care of their immediate family, their home and their neighbors, and after those needs have been done, they can help out in the community and take care of other needs that first responders are not able to get to right away. Today we have CERT responders from 11 cities in the South Bay that make up the Beach Cities Joint CERT organizations, which is El Segundo CERT, Manhattan Beach CERT, Hermosa Beach Disaster Service Workers, Palos Verdes Peninsula CERT, Redonda Beach CERT, and Tri-City CERT, which is Gardena, Lawndale, and Hawthorne. Once a year, all these CERT groups come together to stage a major drill where their members can practice all the CERT skills in a fairly realistic uh, setting. Because of the cost of staging these drills is so great, these organizations pool their resources together and uh, operate jointly. Currently, most of these CERT groups receive almost no governmental funding, but they do receive a lot of governmental support in terms of facilities and other um, encouragement from the cities that they serve. So today is a training day for everybody that will serve all the cities of the South Bay. Talk about what the drills that are taking place. Give us a play-by-play -play of what's going on here on the grounds right now. Every team will go through a number of different exercises. We have three search and rescue venues that teams will go through, two hazmat assessment areas that they'll go to, one of which will be unsafe to enter. Actually, it's not, but if any member or cert person goes inside, one of our safety officers will tell them that they're suddenly dead. But that's good learning. We also have cribbing going on back in the city yard. Cribbing is the art of using wood blocks or other materials to gently lift up materials that might be trapping someone underneath. We also have fire suppression that will be starting in a short time with LA County Fire, allowing every CERT responder to put out a live fire. I thought well, being a city employee, I'm with the Parks and Recreation Department, um, I mainly work down at the Point Fasani Interpretive Center, that it was important for me to get involved and learn how to be part of the Community Emergency Response Team, or CERT, um, being around the public in so many different venues, so many different parks. So that's why I volunteered, that's why I got involved. So talk about what you've really learned in the process and how you see this as being a great benefit to you and the community. Sure. Um, it's a great benefit for me personally, and I, I encourage everyone, if they can, to possibly get involved. Um, there are wonderful programs that that are built around the LA County Fire Department. Um, I wanted to do it because even though I've been a native Californian and I've lived here my whole entire life, I didn't really know what to do when, when there was an emergency. So um, it, it's, been, it's been really helpful, really informative. Well, it's a very important drill for the community. Uh, the community emergency response team is very important. Um, they're able to assist us if uh, disaster happens, if we uh, need them at any time. And, um, and they're able to help um, you know, the neighbors and give good advice to, uh, to the whole community. So it's, it's an opportunity for them to experience a little bit of training in case um, uh, really the big, one, the big one comes. So you're working as a team, so you're learning how to work with the people that have been assigned to this particular group, and they're people you don't know, so it's all new. So what's going on right now in this area and in this drill area? Well, I think we ought to be doing a, assess, a triage. We're going to be looking at the uh, injured person and deciding whether they're immediate, wh which means that they need to get to the hospital as fast as possible because they're bleeding out or they whatever, or they're dead, or they're 
delayed, which means like they've got a broken arm. That, that you don't have to work with them right then. And then there's the people that are walking wounded that you can you can defer and, and actually incorporate some of them into helping you if, if you need help. I have been through this probably for 10 or 15 uh, exercises like this. Um, and you forget. Um, that's why I think it's really important that my uh, neighbors here in Palos Verdes do come out and um, do these exercises, what is it, once a year? But you think this ser serves a very important role in the community? Absolutely, it's really important. Um, just getting your earthquake kit together, if you can just do that much, because that earthquake kit could uh, possibly help you in in a situation like this or any other life-saving situation so neighbors come out certainly these volunteers are working so hard Maria all to keep our community safe and be prepared in an emergency and the community is encouraged to get involved with their local cert team you can check out the one here on the peninsula by going to palaceforties.com slash pv cert and more news coming from rpv city hall efforts are in full swing to build a temporary dog park on the grounds of City Hall. Deputy City Manager Carolyn Petru, along with Public Works Maintenance Superintendent Amelia Blanco, give us more information on the project. The council had asked us to look at potential dog park locations throughout the city. We really were having a tough time identifying an, exi you know, an existing park site that could accommodate uh, such a facility. And our recommendation to the council back in May was to really look more towards a regional solution. There's been talk for a number of years about putting a regional dog park at the former Palos Verdes landfill site and we've sent letters of support to that effect in the past and the council agreed that that at least for the short term is what we should do is continue to support the regional solution but at that meeting they said hey you know what about just creating a a temporary dog park somewhere and the suggestion was made that there's a lot of space here at Upper Point Vicente Park where City Hall is located and they said we've got this big overflow parking lot there and some other areas you know couldn't we do something just on a temporary basis to meet the community's demand while we're waiting for the county uh, to make a decision about the regional solution. So um, that was the direction to staff, so we did take a look at our site here, and rather than the overflow parking lot, uh, which has obviously an existing use going on, we found another area at City Hall that we felt would work actually better. So under the city manager's um, purchasing authority, we've gone ahead and cleared an area and we're making plans to create it into a temporary dog park. And we announced that to the council at the last council meeting. We first started with removing a lot of the acacia brush that was overgrown. Um, and that took a, about a 40 yard dumpster. And after that, um, the larger debris was mulched on site here. Um, and after the mulch was, uh, ground here on site, it was spread around. We also did a little bit of grading here and removed a lot of the rocks. So you really improved the site, and how do you feel about this as this location at Upper Point Vicente as the spot for the park? I really think it's a good spot for the for the dog park. I mean, it's uh, it fits the uh, the area well here. It, it, the contours are perfect for the park, you know, it just follows the lines and contours in the road and things like that, so I think it worked out well. City officials are hoping the temporary dog park will be open to the public by the beginning of November. Peninsula residents can meet some famous authors at the 55th annual Palos Verdes Women's Club Books and Authors Luncheon. The fundraising event takes place at Trump National on November 14th. Seven distinguished authors will be signing their books, including Marsha Clark, the lead prosecutor in the O.J. Simpson trial, 12-year-old celebrity chef and leukemia survivor Jack Witherspoon will talk about his inspirational cookbook, and there will be three RPV authors promoting their stories. Liz Brown Swanson caught up with some of the authors and the president of the PV Women's Club. It is time for the 55th annual Palos Verdes Women's Club wonderful books and authors luncheon. Again, this 55th year it's running. Incredible authors are lined up. Some of the authors are here today to, to meet with me and you'll get a sneak preview of what's to come. But first we're going to meet with the Women's Club president who's joining me now, Jane Thomas. Thank you Hello. for coming here and being here. How exciting, 55 years for 55 this event. 55 years it is and it's a wonderful event and it takes place right here in this ballroom and we sell out every year. Um, 
300 and some people, and we're very excited about this year because we have great authors and each one of them, and I think we're going to have a big success again. Can you do a little bit more about the story of the Women's Club? It was started in 1926. 1926, and it was incorporated in 1956, I believe, and uh, it's a strictly philanthropic group. Uh, we have two fundraisers a year. One is this Books and Authors event, and we have a garden tour in the spring, and all of our profits that we make on our events go to scholarships for local high school seniors and to local charities. Well, it's very exciting to be here with a best-selling author. We have with us Ivan G. Goldman. Terrific that you're going to be part of the Books and Authors Luncheon. And I know you said you've written five books. Fourth novel here that you're going to be uh, showcasing. Talk a little bit about your book and, and all that. Well, uh, the book is called uh, Isaac, A Modern Fable. I didn't, I really remembered the uh, title. I didn't have to look at it. Uh, <laughs> and, the, uh, and you know you're Ivan. Yeah. And the, uh, the premise of the novel is that uh, if you go back to the Bible story, when uh, uh, Abraham was going to uh, slay Isaac and uh, uh, an angel uh, of the Lord uh, stopped Abraham's hand and said, don't do it. It was basically a test for Abraham. Well, my, the premise is that Isaac uh, lived on after that, and uh, uh, he doesn't know why, but he uh, he never died, and that was 4,000 years ago, and he never got older. What, what kind of feedback are you getting um, since you've launched this novel? Well, it got uh, it got pretty good reviews. I, I have to say, I got a starred review in uh, in Booklist and uh, a very uh, uh, encouraging review in Publishers Weekly and and uh, some other places. Congratulations on launching your very first Thank novel, you. Growing Up Beautiful, Thank and you. it's a beautiful story. And we're going to talk a little bit about what your book's about and your inspiration to write it. So um, again, okay. well, congratulations. The book took, it takes place in the 1980s. And what this is, a lot of times when people think of models, they think of the supermodels, which have this fabulous life. And this is about the 99.9% .9 of other girls who are out there modeling. <laughs> and uh, so what you do is you come from America. And some of these girls, because it's the 80s, they're very naive. They're very, very naive. I have to stress that. And then you go over there, and you your world is kind of in two separate realms you've got what do you want people to take away though from from your book when they read it I think what I want them to take away because you know when people hear the word you know oh, growing up beautiful you know it's not quite what it's cracked up to be because kind of like having money you didn't earn it you know you were kind of born with it and so there's this sense of you know oh you're so lucky but it ha it's a double-edged sword well it's great to have with me here E.G. Ryan a familiar face she grew up here on the peninsula went to PV High and has written and illustrated eight children's books congratulations on that and you're working on many more right correct how exciting you'll be participating in the books and authors event again I keep reminding everyone that it's November 14th um, how do they first of all pick you to come and get involved with this how did this all come about well, thanks to Mary Sable, she called me up and we talked and she looked at my books and she really liked them. She actually had a, a child read them and he was impressed, so. The inspiration behind this, your book save? You know, actually the very first one I wrote was Moon Balloons and one of my boys, he lost, his, he lost a balloon and I told him that they go up to hold up the moon because he was throwing a fit. And as soon as I told him that, he stopped. He stopped crying. And now, you know, when they were two years old, they, you know, they were said they hold up the moon. So it's about not throwing a fit. So that kind of started the whole thing. And it's all about, you know, a special message. Like, you know, one of them's about, you know, cleaning up your room, being nice. So they all have a good message. Like eating. This is the good foodies is all about eating healthy food. So they all have a really powerful message. So I read them throughout in you know, the PV school district, the LA school district. We're actually going to Washington D.C. in May to read in the Washington, D.C. area. The Books and Authors Luncheon is always a sellout, so for ticket information, go to pvwomensclub.org. Coming up next in sports, a very famous cup runneth over right here on the peninsula. We'll be right back.